Hello, my name is Rinna Hakim, and you are watching the Arabic Hour. On today's program, we bring you board members of the American Arabic Benevolent Association to discuss their organization and their involvement with the Arab and Arab American community in the Boston area. We also have music by renowned composer Bassem Saba and poetry by Palestinian poet Lisa Suhair Majaj. What we just saw are some pictures of the residents from Sheraton Grove, a community center and independent living establishment developed by the American Arabic Benevolent Association, ABBA. ABBA is a nonprofit organization dedicated to providing social services and educational opportunities to the Arab community. Today at the studio we have with us members of the American Arabic Benevolent Association. Thank you for coming today. Ahlan sahla. Today we have with us Alaya Saudi, President of the Association, Olivia Weishak, former President of the Association, and David Hassar, former President of the Association as well. Thank you. Uh, I think we'd like to start off today just by welcoming our viewers and, and introducing them to the Association and the mission statement of the organization. Well, the, the organization was formed in uh, the mid 70s. Uh, it was formed to uh, provide uh, benevolent and services to the Arab communities. It was a dream to some good Arab Americans that had uh, foreseen uh, the future. And, uh, and as we stand today, uh, the uh, organization on Sheraton Grove, which is 50 units in West Roxbury, and uh, another uh, building on the way on construction would be uh, uh, open for our community in June uh, of 2013. That's great. So you mentioned that the Arab American community here welcomed the organization. What are some of the services that you provide for the community here? Um, we sponsor and subsidize senior trips uh, three or four a year. We have an annual party. We have an assistance fund. We sponsor the Arab um, Arabian Nights radio program. and. Um, we have an assistance fund. We sponsor the Papa Youth Hockey. We also provide uh, food certificates twice a year to our uh, supporting sister churches, uh, Thanksgiving time and Easter for their needy parishioners. And we have a scholarship program, which in the spring we provide one scholarship for the Syrian Lebanese Women's Club of Greater Boston and two in November to the Nicholas D. Baron Veterans Association. And they are for um, Arab Americans. And it's a great program. That's wonderful. There's a lot to be involved in, certainly. How was the history of the organization, and, and you know, if you could take us a little bit from the history of how the whole organization developed into the current organization and structure of today? Well, sure. It was really in the early 70s, as Elias said earlier, where um, the area churches from the Boston and surrounding Boston areas got together and said they were trying to create an organization that could support services for American Arabs coming over when they're already here. So in 1974, they created the American Arabs Benevolent Association. And their primary mission was to help and support uh, needy individuals. Um, and the primary goal was senior housing. And that has been, while our primary focus, as we mentioned earlier, it's not our only focus, but that, that's been the, the basic missions uh, for the entire East since 74. We get wonderful support from the churches as well as the Veterans Association, the Ladies Aid Society, and both the uh, Ladies Aid and Great Women of Boston. So we're very proud of their support, and it's been a great organization since the mid-70s. Um, God bless the, our forefathers for dreaming and staying true to their word, and we're just trying to carry on and expand upon their, uh, their ideas. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, the members of the association, who becomes involved, and some of the reasons that our viewers may want to become involved with the association? First of all, the dues are $10 a year. And that $10 is stretched to subsidize trips, to provide scholarships, to provide the food certificates, 
and any other of the assistance funds. So for ten dollars, you join the association, and that ten dollars goes towards those projects. We have a board of directors, thirty, and we are short fell. And if anyone is interested in becoming a member, they can go online, rbusa.org, download an application, and forward it to the nominating committee. We meet once a month, and we do pretty well. The best thing is that there's really no responsibilities as you as as a member. It's really a support organization. Um, you know, for only ten dollars, it goes a long way, as Olivia said. And the main thing is that we're trying to generate support for the activities and and draw on our community for their expertise in providing services that we need because everything can't come from the board. We try to provide that leadership, but we eventually go out to the community to get those people involved and say, okay, can, can you help us do that? And so that's. It's a lot for only ten dollars. Now, are your services um, generally catering towards the older community members and um, you know the elderly of American community that is living in the Boston area, um, or are your projects a little bit more um, widespread in terms of of who you reach out to? Well, in, in today we basically provide mostly for the Greater Boston area. I mean, that that was the, the primary goal when the organization was created. I think down the road as we get into that discussion, we're, we're looking to go a little farther out with the reach. But and it's not just catered to the elderly. We try to by supporting the youth soccer program, uh, put Abba's name out there. The, certainly the food certificates that we provide are for families, not just the elderly. Um, so we try to provide services to an array of groups of all ages. Um, now, housing is our primary, but that is not preventing us from trying to cater to and support everybody. So, what are some of your current projects? Right now, our big project, well, let's talk about a past project. We just um, had a very successful Dancing with the Arby Stars. Last year we had it, we raised $69,000 to benefit the James M. Sala Family Housing at Sheridan Heights. This year we had it in October and we realized $63,000. And in essence, we had a representative from each church, each of our sister churches. They attended the Freddie Steer Dance Studio. They took lessons. And then we had a wonderful, magnificent event at Mosley's. And it was attended by 550 people. All of us priests were there. And everyone had a great time. So that was, that's kind of common. And we're planning to uh, have more. Yeah, next yep. year, God willing. Yep. And we, as soon as the, uh, the year turns, we'll discuss what we're going to do for the senior trips. And we, we're trying. No. We're so, trying to help our community. So I know this organization is, is certainly, you know, very close to each of your hearts, and, and your passion is certainly uh, present in your conversations with me. I'd like to hear a little bit individually from each of you of, of really where you hope to see the organization go and, and um, you know, why you continue to, to be involved. Well, every time uh, you visit the uh, house on Sheraton Grove, uh, you would uh, really uh, uh, feel the reason of why you want to get involved and why you want to continue your involvement. Um, the organization uh, not only provides housing to the community, it also uh, provides such an environment, a social environment, that our elderly live every day um, and support through other uh, things than just living, uh, support uh, to their daily needs, whether they're medical, social, uh, all kind of needs that our elderly or any elderly uh, would uh, need uh, during uh, their life, uh, that house uh, kind of have that support. Yeah. Well, I'm very fortunate because I'm retired, so I spend quite a bit of time at Sheridan Grove and watching Sheridan Heights being built. And I have self-satisfaction because many of the residents knew me when I was a little girl. And for me to go and reminisce, and they're just so happy. And there's always activities going, as Elias said. It's just a wonderful environment, and to see everyone happy and safe, and there's always projects going on. They're occupied all the time. They're not just sitting stagnant in a room. 
And I feel that if, if my parents needed to have lived in an environment like that, it would definitely have been Shepherd and Grove. So I have a lot of, I have great satisfaction. Great. Well, my passion is, is just really for the uh, Arabic community. Um, because we're not just into housing, we're into many of the other activities that we talked about. <coughs> I just feel that there aren't organizations out there that can cater to a specific culture the way we can and with the, the ability that we have. So to me it was important that we be able to provide for all different age groups support and services that, that are needed. Uh, th these are tough times and everybody needs to turn somewhere at some point and we want to be able to be there for our own culture. And sometimes the government can't come through because of their funding um, constraints, but we have the ability to draw on a very large segment of the population to provide that support, and so uh, we're doing that. Wonderful. And so you mentioned uh, the new housing uh, project that's currently being undertaken. What are some of your expectations for that project, and if you just want to you know, discuss a little bit of what is going to be provided there? Well, Chart Nights is really, uh, so far, about a 16-year dream. Um, after we had built Church and Grove, which was really the the jewel of our forefathers. I mean, that's one of the basic reasons that they were formed is they were trying to build senior housing for uh, the Arabic community. And one of the interesting thoughts was when Sheridan Grove first opened up, you probably had less than a handful of individuals that applied uh, to be housed there. And today it's probably 60 to 65 percent uh, Arabic um, population there. So as, as time has gone on and, and they've spread the word, they realize how, how great it is over there. And the waiting list at Sheraton Grove at, uh, at one point had gone to over six to seven years before someone could get into Sheraton Grove. I mean, people went into Sheraton Grove, they, they didn't leave. Um, and that's great. It's a testament to all the activities that we do there and how great that we kept up the facility and that they didn't want to leave. So with that, uh, the ABBA board directors wanted to try to build another uh, senior housing facility. And it's taken that long because we first tried to find land, but in Boston that's, it was just too expensive. Um, and we had the land that we already owned right across the street from Sheraton Grove. It was just on ledge. And time, construction times have changed and you can build on it much more economically today than you could have, say, 30, 40 years ago. So the board uh, had hired a consultant and we had been working with them to develop uh, Sheraton Heights. We got approval. Um, three years ago from HUD for their funding and over the past uh, year and a half we've been working with the state and the city to get all the other f financing in place. We started construction uh, last May 1st and we expect to be complete uh, sometime uh, late spring, very early summer. Uh, we're ahead of schedule but the intent is that we're providing uh, 70 units of housing for the elderly. You have to be 62. Forty of those units will be uh, HUD subsidized. Uh, it's the 202 program, sim similar to what Sheraton Grove is. Person uh, pays 30 percent of their income towards the rent. The rent is around $1,400, so they would only pay a maximum of 30 percent of their income, and the government subsidizes the, the balance. There are 23 units that will be uh, moderate income and those rates will come out in January of what your income range needs to be, whether it's a single person or um, a double occupancy. And then there are seven market rate rents, which ABBA will determine what those rents will be, probably you know in the $1,800 plus or minus range. Um, but the advantage of uh, the Cheriton Heights building compared to Cheriton Grove is that we have a very large community space in the first floor. I mean, the government regulations back in the... Mm -hmm. Uh, late 70s didn't allow us to build the type of community space that we need for, for the seniors. And when you go over to Turn Grove, you'll see the original community room, and that's all they had. Um, but in this space, we, we will allow 10% of the whole space to be a community space. So, you know, we have a large dining area, we have uh, a library that we're building, we have a computer room, we have a game room, we have a salon area. So there are lots of activities that can be held there for the seniors. And it's mixed, so all the, each floor has a representation of the different units, you know, the, the 202 units, they're 550 square feet, 
uh, one bedroom. There are one one bedroom um, for the 40 units and the 23. The 23 units of uh, the moderate income, they're 750 square feet, and then the market rate bedrooms are 950 square feet. So it's going to provide a lot of opportunities for individuals. We encourage everybody to send an application that feels that they'll they may want to live there and they'll be with the age 62 or over. Well, it certainly seems like an exciting place to be and, you know, the development of it all is, is also exciting. Is there a place where people can go and, and be involved and see exactly what's going on with the project? Well, it's the... It's on the, the if anybody wants to go, we have um, a fellow by the name of Bill Seeger. He is uh, usually in the older building and if someone wanted to go, he would be able to take them in for a tour because right now um, it's pretty well underway. And the rooms have all been framed, the primer paint is being put on, and then do a couple of mock-up units so that you can see exactly what the units are going to look like. So it, it, I've been in there a couple of times. Very, very exciting. Very, very exciting. I know you can go online and, 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 and watch the project go on hour by hour. It's like, uh, what, what time to what time, David? Well, it's uh, in the camera uh, live streams, the construction. So Monday through Friday between 7 and 4, they can go to Sheraton, uh, dot zapto uh, dot org uh, and they can watch the construction and, and, and see it live so very high tech that's uh, well, yeah that's certainly yeah. Really yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so are the current residents of Sheraton Grove able to utilize the services and the functions of the new building absolutely I mean again one of the advantages of building such a, a large amount of community, community space is we're treating this as sort of a senior campus setting not building Sheraton Grove by itself and then Sheraton Heights by itself. We wanted them to interact. So there are things at Sheraton Heights that the residents of Sheraton Grove will be able to utilize, such as a very large uh, library, um, a game room, etc. At the same time, there's space over at Sheraton Grove that the folks at Sheraton Heights would want to do. And that was one of the reasons why we are really in the final uh, throws of completing like a five million dollar renovation at Sheraton Grove. We updated every single apartment in here, all the systems. We added a second elevator. We've added a greenhouse in the back. Uh, we've uh, landscaped. We've added patios. So, and some of those things Sheraton Heights won't have. So they're both going to have something that the, the different building occupants can take advantage of, and that's what we are trying to encourage. And also, the, uh, David mentioned the garden in the back uh, with the landscape. The garden consists also have in it a uh, stone uh, uh, patio like, and and people can buy a stone for a hundred dollars, mm -hmm. and, and also can buy into a bench for eighteen hundred dollars. So uh, we encourage people to do that, and people usually do that in memory of a beloved uh, person in their family that passed away or. Uh, or anything that would really affect their life. That's a very nice tribute, um, yeah. and it's you know it's a way to also get more members of the community involved uh, with with the ongoing projects. And um, have there been kind of significant outreach programs into the members of the community? What are some of the, the activities that you promote within the larger community? Uh, yes, the uh, the board always uh, uh, try to go out to the community to reach out and uh, encourage membership, encourage participation. Uh, and by doing that, we go out to to talk about ABBA and, 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 and tell the story and let people know, update them about the activities, about the, the buildings, what's going on. Uh, ABBA is a secular organization. Any Arab American can belong to ABBA, as long as you have an Arab heritage in you, or you're married to an Arab. Uh, and ABBA, um, the door, uh, doors are open to everyone to come and participate. Jo first join as a member, and, and as Olivia said previously, membership is cheap, it's only $10 a year. And that $10 a year includes a lot of services, mailings and other services that you provide to, to members. Um, and, and and doors are open for for members to participate, be on the board, be uh, on committees, uh, do a lot of activities, and join and help. Are there any plans for creating new ABBA chapters in Western Mass, Central Mass, New Hampshire? Y yes, the plans are there, and the plans are to assist those communities to create their own chapters, and 
we here in the Boston chapter are ready and excited when that happens because we do want the community to pick up on our success and move forward. So the, the idea would be that we know that there are needs for our urban community in those, in those uh, areas and by creating those chapters you may see a certain height or chair and grove pop up in Worcester, pop up in uh, Lawrence or or in Northern Rhode Island so that they can also take advantage of our abilities to provide services. Well, we certainly here at the Arabic Hour want to thank you very much for coming to the studio today thank you. and telling us about your wonderful organization and we'd love to have you back on there. Thank, thank, thank you. Our pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Log on to the ABBA website at aabausa.org for information on the organization and how you can become a member or get involved. Thank you for watching the Arabic Hour. We'll be back with music and poetry after this short break. You are watching the Arabic Hour, a program of news, views, culture, cuisine, and the Arab American experience. To view today's program or any previous program, log on to our website at www.arabichour.org. The poetry of Lisa Suhair Mejaj will be coming up, but first, music by Bassem Saba and his group from their performance at the William G. Abdullah Memorial Library event. <laughs> Thank you. 
United Nations General Assembly in a resolution to welcome Palestine as an observer state to the UN. In a passionate speech, President Abbas solicited the support of majority members at the UN and took a step closer to securing the future of Palestine vis-à-vis -vis the international community. The poetry of Lisa Suhair Mezaj, a Palestinian-American poet, is similarly passionate in its expression of Palestinian rights and hopes. She summarizes most eloquently the struggles and perseverance of the Palestinian people and the daily oppression faced in their lives. It's a poem in nine parts, and it's called uh, Fifty Years On, Stones in an Unfinished Wall. One. Fifty years on, I am trying to tell the story of what was lost before my birth, the story of what was there. Before the stone house fell, mortar blasted loose, rocks carted away for new purposes or smashed, the land declared clean, empty. Before the oranges bowed in grief, blossoms shifting to the ground like snow, quickly melting. Before my father clamped his teeth hard on the pits of exile, slammed shut the door to his eyes.